Hello, hello, and welcome everybody. I'm so excited that you guys are here live. And those of you guys that are gonna be watching the replay, welcome. Today, we have our one of our guest healers that we have. Uh, her name is Dr. Caitlin Jervis, and she is incredible. Her energy is so fun, so free spirited. I just always imagine you like frolicking through the woods and I just adore you. Not only are you fun and free, but you also, you know, your shit. And I just appreciate that so much with, you know, the women who are coming forward right now. So you're here as one of our guest speakers for our everyday um, divinity. And so this group is really about us becoming who we truly are. You know, it's about speaking our truth and, and healing from our past wounds and really reclaiming our divinity and our magic and how we can start to birth that into our everyday life. And, and understanding that we are divine beings in, right now in this moment. And so working on all the layers that kind of go around that. So this course is a lot of, of shadow work. It's a lot of um, embodiment work. So we work with movement, we work with essential oils. We're gonna be working with all sorts of things. But the other part about this is we're also working with the mystery teachings of the goddesses. And for me, I am a priestess of the blue rose. And so that is with the faces of the divine mother in her many forms. So me, I'm an oracle for that. So I, I see that, I feel that, and I'm being called to embody that as well. So this journey is for all of us, right? As we do this, as we teach, as we learn, as we grow, as we connect, we're all sharing medicine. And I just love having this space for that. And so I've invited people over this next six months, different people from um, shamans to uh, sound healers, to mystics, to, you know, holistic pr practitioners, to, um, you know, also artists. We're having all sorts of people that are coming in this group um, to share and to understand that that's how we make the shift in the world is by connecting and sharing our stories and understanding that there's no one better than the other. We're all in this together. And so we can rise together. So that's kind of the intention of this space. Um, and it's only, we're only in like week three and you guys have already seen what's happened in the first three weeks. So <laughs> it's been, it's been amazing. So, um, so thank you so much for being here. So first off, Caitlin, I just want you to introduce yourself. Let us know who you are and give us a little bit of background of what you do. Sure. Um, well, I, yeah, I want to say thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. I, I so admire you and the work you do. It feels so, so, so critical and important. And I also just want to say like props to every single human that is on this journey with you. Like this is, this is the work right now, right? Like this, this is, um, we're not fucking around. <laughs> like this is really important stuff that we're doing together like that and we get to do it together in communities so just like acknowledgement and thank you to everyone that is taking this journey um yeah so my name is caitlin jarvis and i am a medical intuitive and a holistic health coach um, my background is in nursing, and so I used to work as a registered nurse, and then I got my master's and my doctorate degree, and I worked as a family nurse practitioner for a bit of time, and um, yeah, just hit a point where I wasn't, uh, didn't feel resonant to be in the Western medical system any longer, and so that's when I pivoted, I left, and that was a few years ago now, started doing what I do now, which is holistic health coaching and medical intuitive work. And um, yeah, that just means I work with people, mostly women, but also people of all genders um, to kind of create and sustain a holistically healthy lifestyle, whatever that means to them. I very much don't think that health is one size fits all. Like, yes, there are tenants and cores, um, like pillars, but also the way it looks can be very different for very di for different people. So um, yeah, and when I say holistic, that to me always means like physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Like we want all those pieces to be in place because obviously ultimately they're all integrated. Like there is no separating them out. Like one always influences the other. So um, yeah, so that's me and what I do. 
Well, I am so happy for you to be here and to share your journey because um, I think it's really going to resonate with this group of women too. So I want to go a little bit into your journey a little bit more if we can, because a lot of us that are here, we're being asked to come into another level, right? We're being asked to go from one place in our life to the next. So would you share a little bit about your journey and like, like, how did you know, besides like feeling maybe bored or you just had this feeling, like, how did you know it was time? And what, what did that journey look like? And maybe what were some of the obstacles that you had to overcome with showing up online and speaking and going from one to the other? What, what was that story? What was that journey like for you? Yeah. So let's see. If I were to start at the beginning, um, the first part in terms of making the transition from kind of conventional medical practitioner to online business owner, healer, way more woo woo. <laughs> um, it's funny because people will sometimes say to me like, oh, that must have taken a lot of courage to, to make that leap. And the truth is, I think I, it felt more, I don't want to use the word foolish, but like to me, it, it felt like I had no other choice. It felt like I had no other choice. And also another way of saying that is um, the universe set me up so that it felt like I had no other choice because where I ended up was um, I worked as a nurse practitioner a few different places. The last place I worked was like very toxic work environment, like the worst possible place, like 15 minute appointments to do like a full physical and a pap on a woman, which is like ridiculous. <laughs> like typically you would have an hour to do that and um, just like throwing pills at people. And so anyways, and, and they were not respectful of the employees at all. And so um, I ended up at a place where I was literally like just my own health was going down the drain, my own sanity. Like I felt my, like my soul was just being squeezed dry. It's like, this isn't why I went into nursing. I want to help people. And instead I'm just like collecting their money and like hurrying them through the door or whatever it felt like. And, um, and so I think if I would have just had like a basic mediocre nurse practitioner job, I might still be doing that. But instead the universe gave me the opportunity to be in the worst of the worst, um, jobs. And, and from there, it was kind of just divine timing, like things lined up for me. So I was in this horrible position and really realizing how much it didn't resonate with me and what a cost it was to my own mind, body, and spirit to stay where I was. And then at the same time, I was working with um, like an intuitive life coach. She was the one that opened me up to like, oh, you could do medical intuitive work. And I was like, whoa, really? I mentored with her a little bit. Um, I think she also was kind of my expander or she was the one that I saw that I saw like, oh, there's another way of doing things. There's this whole online business world. Like I didn't even know about that, right? Um, and so she opened that up for me. And then full transparency, I also had um, some inheritance come to me. And so financially I was kind of set up as well to have a time where I could like transition. And so all those things just fell into place and it was really just like, okay, well, yeah, like, fuck this job. And I'm like, I, like, I was like, no, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And so, um, so it felt like a relief. It felt instead of feeling like courage or something, I don't know, it felt like a relief to like pivot from there into the new thing. But as you mentioned, then shortly after I realized there was a whole nother set of things and definitely being an online entrepreneur um, set of obstacles, I should say. And yeah, having my own business and being on this journey has been one of the most deeply personal healing journey opportunities as I've grown my business and shown up online and um, yeah, and continued my own spiritual growth and all these things. And so yeah, at that point, obstacles were, you know, yeah, terrified, totally shadows, right? Like terrified of looking stupid. Um, my core wound of like, not enough. Everyone's going to think I'm not enough. Like I worked in the academic realm. Like, so the place I was coming from was like scientific, logical, um, you know, education, degrees. And then all of a sudden here I was talking about 
medical intuitive stuff. And I was like, so embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was terrified that I would be judged like at best, just as being stupid and at worst as being some kind of sham or like medical people would think like, oh, she's trying to fraud, commit fraud or like, you know, scam people or something. Um, and yeah, so many, I'm trying to think of any of the other things that came up for me. And the truth is those things can still be there now. It's just, I'm more familiar with those voices. I recognize them. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the voice that tells me I need to spend an hour on this post instead of just like letting it be good enough and sending it out. Um, or it's the part that would be like, oh, I need to maniacally prepare for this that I'm sitting at right now, instead of just like trusting that I can show up and what wants to come through will come through. Um, and so those things, yeah, those shadows are still there, but I can watch them a little bit easier and better friends with them. I know them. Um, and yeah. 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 And I can relate to that too, is, is showing up from going from one area to the next and being like, well, this is actually who I've, for me, it was like, this is who I've always been. And only my really close circle knew about it. And um, when I look back and I talk to people, they, they always kind of knew it. And I was the one that was holding it back. You know, it was like me holding it back. Um, but I always felt like I would get judged or people would think that I was crazy or, you know, the crazy cat lady or whatever. I don't have cats, but <laughs> you know, like that, that kooky lady. And yeah. now I can just strive for that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. The other thing that was popping up for me too, um, one of my big obstacles at the beginning was my mom, <laughs> like judgment from family. Um, I grew up in a really, in a non-denominational Christian family and I don't identify with that anymore. I just identify as spiritual now. Um, and, but my mom is still, my mom is actually Catholic now. And so, yeah, talking with her as I was telling her about my new business and going through um, those triggers of, you know, to her, she she didn't know what medical intuit intuition was. All she knew is that she's been taught that if I'm connecting to spirits or voices and if I'm not Catholic or Christian, then like that's probably evil and that's probably the devil. And that was really triggering for me because I think there was still this small part of me, like 1% that was like, am I wrong? Like, is this evil? Like, am I going to go to hell? Like, because I had been raised in this certain way. So it was really deep in my system that, um, yeah, it was really deep in my system. And so having those conversations with my mom, looking back, I don't know if I actually needed to have those conversations, but I mean, obviously I did because I had them. So it was part of my process and my journey, but those were really challenging. And even more recently, I totally had like the witch wound, I'll call it come up again. I was living with her for a short period of time during the pandemic. And um, she saw some books about like, I don't know, Green Witch or something in my room. And I wasn't trying to hide them, but she um, saw them and was really bothered, bothered by them and had this big talk with me about like, basically, I don't want you doing witchcraft in the house or else you have to move out. And I'm just like, what? I'm like an adult woman. But also I was very like, I. I, triggered, I got triggered. I felt really unsafe. I felt judged. I was like, <gasps> the mother wound also was coming in. So um, yeah, so that's been an ongoing one for me as well. And I think as I, of course, just became more confident in myself and what I was doing and my path, then it's like, okay, other people can have their thoughts and judgments and whatever. And really like, that's none of my business. That's on them, drawing boundaries. Um, and also then ultimately at the end, like having compassion for my mom, realizing, you know, she's, she's doing what she was taught. That's not really right or wrong either. Like I'm not available to be, I'm not, a bit, you know, I'm not available with certain boundaries, but also I can have compassion for her and we can just, um, 
agree to disagree. <laughs> so yeah, that was another one coming up. I definitely resonate that with that. I come from uh, my parents, not so much, but like my grandparents and aunts and uncles, very religious uh, background. And I've had to have quite a few conversations and, and some of them don't talk to me anymore and that's okay. Um, but I think those journeys, like you said, like you needed to have it, right? It, and it also kind of teaches us discernment because when you're thinking, am I crazy? Is this wrong? You're, it's, I don't want to say a spirit's testing you. I don't want to say it like that, but it's almost like you're going through an initiation. What mm -hmm. is the truth? Yeah. What is this that is the trigger? Where, where is this, you know, more deeply rooted? And so it sounds like you are definitely going through that process. And I think that everybody who chooses to go on a spiritual journey will have that come up in some shape, or form. And it's really about understanding and using our discernment. Like it's okay. Like you said, to have compassion for other people, to understand that other people are, don't have to agree with what you do, but also not to mold yourself into them or to fit into that, that box and to allow yourself to be expressed as who you truly are. And that is a hard lesson to learn, but I think so many of us are going through that right now. And and we'll go through different levels of it, right? Throughout our whole journey, there will be different levels. So I'm glad that you brought that up because um, you, you're all going through it. Yeah, absolutely. The last one that's just like popping into my mind is um, was like a relationship. I was in a relationship with a man that was very kind of like on again and off again. And But when we first started dating, I was, you know, conventional nurse practitioner. And it's really, as I was, I was going through my spiritual awakening for me, a lot of my spiritual awakening came from when I got sober, when I quit drinking alcohol in 2012. Um, and so, yeah, I was going through this metamorphosis and then was in this kind of tumultuous on again, off again relationship. And um, I'll always remember because it hit me. So it, it felt so it hurt so much that, um, that as I was, you know, I, I felt like my spirituality was this flower that was blossoming. And then I was talking to him. And at one point he said, you're just too spiritual. Like you're too spiritual. And I felt so, cause I, I loved this man. Like I wanted to be in a relationship with him. And I felt like I was having to choose between this like amazing thing that was just starting to open. And then I felt like he was kind of like stepping on it and saying it was bad and it was so tempting to just be like yeah you know what okay whatever just that's kind of crazy stuff like I'll just put that over there or do it in secret or whatever you know but and at the same time you know I don't I don't think I would have permanently been able to do that like I'm sure it would have kept trying to come up um but that felt really challenging at the time and but also then looking back, I feel like it was really a moment where I was in my strength and power and really like a fork in the road for me where I was like, no, I choose myself. Like I choose this journey. I choose um, what feels authentic and I want to see how this is going to blossom. And like, thank God, <laughs> thank God, like, thank goddess. Um, so yeah, yeah. Other people are a thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Like you said, the universe is just, it's using it to teach us and test us and build us to be stronger, I feel. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about that, I felt like when you made that choice, um, like you embraced your wild woman, right? Because yes. you're like, this is it. And so sometimes in those, like we will move through these archetypal energies um, of the goddess in whatever way or shape or form, the shaman, the, the priestess, the wild woman, the healer, like this is all part of it. So it felt like that decision was leading you into maybe that wild woman. So you can embrace your yourself and your freedom. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. And it was funny. Um, it's interesting to see who's attracted to us on our journeys, I'll say, like what kind of partners we're attracted to and what kind of partners are attracted to us. I think he loved my wild woman and was also terrified of her. Mm -hmm. And so really wanted me to mostly keep her under wraps and not really share her with anyone else. Whereas the person that I'm in a relationship with now 
loves my wild woman, loves my spirituality, loves my woo, you know, loves everything, loves my shadows, like, um, and, and that's really, both of them were a reflection of where I was at with myself at the time as well. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's hard to let people go that you love, but when you know inside, when you have that feeling inside and, you know, it's, it's like, you, you can't ignore it. Like you said, you cannot ignore it. After a while, the call is so loud. You're like, okay. So it can be scary, but um, if that's something that's within people's hearts, why not explore that and see what it, what it leads to? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I love that you're talking about the wild woman. I remember actually being with him on a trip or something and reading one of my first favorite kind of divine feminine books was um, still is one of my favorite, but when I first read it, Women Who Run With The Wolves, I remember reading that as I was dating him and I was just like, oh my fucking God, you know, it was like whole new worlds were opening up and I was like, this is me, like this so resonates and yeah. Oh, I love that. I have the goosebumps when you're talking about that. So that feels important too. So if you guys haven't checked out that book, I know you can get it at all the bookstores. It's on Audible as well. I think you can probably get it on Kindle. Um, it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to keep us closed up and says, and, and really that's their own insecurities. You know, um, a lot of times when people are, are, they're afraid of what would happen to be with someone who's in their power because roles shift because dynamics of the home shift dynamics of the relationship shifts so there's you know that can reflect in the partner and and what they're struggling through and and sometimes you might be able to work through it right you might be able to have those open conscious conversations with people but other times it it might be a dead end and so you have to make that choice you know are you willing to give up your your, your true nature to please someone else. Yeah. And that's so hard. And it, I mean, I struggled with it. I, I recently have, you know, separated from my husband. And so I am going through that too. And it can be hard. And, and even after it's done, you go back and go, wait, did I just do the right thing? <laughs> but I know in my heart, like my guidance to my divinity and the, and to my guides, like into my path and my journey and my heart, it's soul, it's soul led. And so I have to continue to learn to trust. And that's one of the biggest things too, is trusting in ourselves, trusting in our, the reasons we had the conversations, the reasons we did or didn't do things and forgiving ourselves for whatever choice we ever made in the past, whether it was right or wrong, doesn't matter, but forgiving ourselves for any of those spaces where we may still hold on to like, what if, you know? Absolutely. Yes. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I know you kind of talked about, um, medical intuition, right. Mm -hmm. And also you're a medical medium, which I, this is so funny. I'm such a nerd. I've always been a learner. <laughs> I love, like, I still have the, the cassette tapes of Caroline Miss, um, anatomy what is it oh gosh anatomy of the spirit yes I still have that yes I love that you had cassette tapes that's so cute oh, God, it, yeah. that book I, is wild because I also stumbled on that book back when I was just like a conventional nurse and I remember actually looking at it and she was talking about something about you know not speaking your throat can um you know, create a sore and not speaking your truth could create a sore throat. And I remember thinking like, that's so stupid. Of course not. Like it's just viruses and bacteria. Like, but I don't, but then of course reading it 10 years later, like, I don't even know how I ended up with it, why I kept it. It's like funny as you look back and you see the threads that are there. Cause back then I was like, no way. <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah. So that's another one. If you guys haven't checked that out, Carolyn Miss Spirit or Anatomy of Spirit. Is that what it is? Anatomy yeah. of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great book too. So tell us a little bit more about like, what is medical mediumship and, and what does that process look like? Yeah. Um, of actually doing it or, or learning it or both. 
oh, all of it, just your journey with it. Like, how did you stumble upon that and be like, oh, I can actually see that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So in fact, like a couple of the famous ones are like Carolyn Miss, um, Anthony, forget his last name for some reason the medical medium like if people know the book the medical medium I forget his last name for some reason um anyways those are a couple of like well-known medical mediums I didn't know anything about it looking back I can see how I had and I think again we all I'll say the nurses but I think you know we all have this obviously but like looking back myself and the nurses I worked with and other healthcare professionals, of course we had intuition, gut senses, like about whatever, if a patient's not doing well, if a patient needs antibiotics or not, if we need to do an x-ray or not, like looking back, it's like, of course that was always there, but I didn't necessarily trust it. I don't think I gave it a lot of credence and um, I definitely wouldn't have trusted it. Oh, you know, of course, you couldn't make like medical decisions based on that. You had to kind of follow it. And the truth is medicine is much more of a practice of art than it is of science. Like more than people realize there are a lot, there's a lot of room for interpretation, I'll say. Anyways, um, yeah, so looking back, but at the time I wasn't really aware of it. I was just, you know, following protocols, doing things I was taught as a nurse practitioner, as a registered nurse, nurse practitioner. And then it was when I was working with the intuitive life coach that she was like, you could do medical intuitive work. And I was like, whoa, really? Um, that felt very daunting and scary. And like, because of course you're just like, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? Like, I think anyone that has ever stepped into doing intuitive readings, right? Like that haunts you <laughs> forever. And even still, sometimes I'm like, oh, what if I'm wrong? But then it's just like, okay, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Like, that's okay. It's not attached to my worth or that I'm good at this or whatever. Like it's not attached to the value that I can give to people. Um, I'll come back to that, but yeah. So, so she just had me practice. She had me practice on her. I think I remember the first person I practiced on was a former client of hers or something. She arranged it. She got us on the phone. She basically told me, sit down, like connect with this person's energy, whatever that meant to me. I wasn't practiced in doing that and write whatever, write down whatever comes to you. And I was like, okay, like I'll just write down random things that obviously my neurons are just firing and like creating some random things that I'll write down. Um, and I was like, okay, done, I guess. I don't know. Like, she was like, okay. And then we got on a call with the woman and we started talking. And I think I was, I don't even remember if I started sharing what I had or what it was, but um, yeah, one of the things that had come up was like SIBO. I think I had SIBO written down, which is like um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and not a Western medical diagnosis. So I wasn't really familiar with it. And yeah, and the woman was like, oh yeah, I have SIBO. And I was like, my jaw dropped. And I was just like, oh shit, like this is a thing, like, okay. Um, and then it was, it really was honestly a bunch of practice. Like I was mentored and learned from her, from my mentor, her name was Malia. Um, and she, but the way she did it, yeah, was basically just like flow of consciousness. So she didn't really have a structure. Over time, I basically just like practiced. I practiced on her. I think she had me. I had someone pushing me to practice. You know, I did practicing. I was in groups with Athena back in the day <laughs> and other people where we would like practice for each other and everything and learn more about how to do it. And yeah, over time, it was just like gradually, gradually really developing that trust. I also created my own framework. It was more just, it was how it came to me. Um, it was just what made it easier for me. And, um, and what else did I want to, oh, and it looked different than I thought it was going to look. So like, I thought coming from Western medicine, like, Ooh, maybe I, I just get to download a bunch of Western medical diagnoses and, you know, download labs. It was like, I was still using the Western medical system as my framework. And then I realized it just didn't work like that for me. And I think it does for some medical mediums. Like I think Carolyn Mace talks about like, oh, knowing someone has lung cancer or something like that. And 
sometimes diagnoses will come to me, but um, more often than not, it is not Western medical diagnoses. Like how I work now is basically connecting to someone's energy, bringing through information that would benefit them in four areas. So I've split it up into physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, because that just made sense in my brain. And so I'll sit down before a session and connect with someone with their energy for 20 or 30 minutes before I actually get on with them and just like write down all the stuff that comes through. And I'll also do a little stick figure and do kind of like an energetic head to toe. So as a nurse or a nurse practitioner, I would have done like a head to toe exam. Um, but I do like a little head to toe on this little avatar that I create. And I realized I could even notice how I drew the avatar, like how I drew it often had implications for what was going on for someone physically. Um, and so, yeah. And so over time that just, um, I practiced and I trusted and, now coming back to that idea of like being wrong like even now you know once in a while someone will be like oh I don't know what that I'm like oh I'm picking up something in your shoulder do you have an old injury or something and someone's like no I don't know you know I'll just be like okay we'll just let's put that on a shelf we'll come back to it we'll see and like more often than not somehow they'll be like oh there was that thing or like the person where I was like oh I feel like I'm picking up on like constipation and they're like no I'm not really constipated I'm like okay and then later they're like oh yeah I take a bunch of magnesium every day I'm like oh okay so you are constipated but but you're not because you're taking the magnesium so like I get it that makes sense now um so yeah so you you know you don't have to be triggered by it but yeah, that's been my journey. And then it was really from there that I realized, oh, I don't really want to just like throw all this information at people because it can be rather overwhelming and then be like, okay, bye, good luck. Like, so I was like, why don't I help them make the changes that are coming through and that they want to make? <laughs> and that's kind of where the, the holistic health coaching emerged from, even though I, I basically do more of that than medical intuitive work. I still start all my packages with a medical intuitive session if the person is open to it. Um, yeah, I think I had one person one time, I think I gave one away for free as some kind of contest or something and there was one time that someone was like the person that won it was like oh actually this doesn't align with my values like I don't want to receive this kind of reading and I was just like okay no problem obviously back in the day that would have really triggered me but at the, then I was like okay whatever and now with all my clients even like my most recent male client who's not woo woo at all I was like we can do this medical intuitive reading or we cannot do it and like do some other stuff instead. And he was like, yeah, no, I'd be into it. And then of course he was like blown away by, <laughs> by the feminine, by the feminine intuition. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how it works for me now. And that was my journey with it. I love it. I love it. I think it's so amazing. So there's a couple of things that came up for that. The first one is, so like as a Reiki practitioner, like I go through the chakra system and the meridians. So I work with the meridian systems and the organs, the temples. So like, that's how I do a lot of my work. Like when I'm with a person, I can also do it distantly. So those of you guys that are watching that are, you know, a Reiki practitioner or any kind of hands-on healer, really, you can start to ask. And really it's just about setting that intention and asking, right. Allowing the Reiki to still flow through you because that's the source energy, but also knowing that you can expand your gifts and your intuition to help the person. But that also brings us up into the fine line that we walk as a medical practitioner and a woo woo or, you know, a Reiki or a healer. So, you know, what is the fine line for that? Because I can't just be a medical you know, intuitive. I can't go out and diagnose people. That's, that's not what I can do. So um, what does that fine line kind of look like? Is there specific training that you have to have or specific degrees that you have to have? Yeah, there, there are certifications out there. I believe I've never got one because I was just kind of mentored and then kind of created my own thing. And as far as I know, I've never had someone ask me like, are you certified in this or something like it's, you know, uh, maybe rare enough that 
like people wouldn't even know to ask that in my experience. I'm sure those are also amazing, great ways to do it and valuable things, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, but yes, I do have to be very clear with people. So I have it in my contract and I say it when I'm doing my medical intuitive session, like I am not your medical provider. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to diagnose anything. So I don't diagnose anything. Um, in a medical intuitive session, if anything were to come up, it would just be like, hmm, I had this thing coming up. Like, is that something that you've talked to your provider about? Do you know if, and then I, it'll maybe be like, oh, so I'm very careful, like just how I say things. And like, I think at one time I did have some kind of like breast cancer thing come up and I was just like, okay, I'm having this come up. Um, you know, when was your last mammogram? Like, okay, are you due for one? Like, does breast cancer run in your family? So maybe that's me slipping into a little bit of my nurse practitioner, but like, um, but then I was like, okay, yeah, you know, if it resonates with you. And I also actually always say with every session, um, like you are the expert on you, not me. So mm -hmm. if I say something that doesn't resonate with you, please feel free to say that doesn't resonate with me. Or, you know, I would never want to be the one coming in being like, well, you have armor around your heart and I don't care if you think you don't, like you do, you know, like that's just not my style and that wouldn't feel good to me. So I always invite people. And I think that's part of the journey of, right? Like starting learning to trust our body wisdom. And we're so used to having all these external experts tell us things and project things onto us instead of really being able to be like, well, I know, I know best. I know if something resonates with me or not. And so anyways, that's separate, but, um, but yeah, so I don't diagnose or like medically treat. I do have lots of, you know, suggestions and recommendations and resources that come through in medical intuitive sessions. And the person's always welcome to, you know, take them or leave them. Like sometimes I might be like, oh yeah, maybe check your thyroid. Like, so go see your medical provider and check your thyroid. So I try to be very clear, like I am not, um, I'm not acting as your provider here and acting as a coach and an intuitive. And then what you do with this information is your, your responsibility and your choice. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that, that you brought that up too. Um, because ultimately, you know, just like as healers, it's, we're the facilitators. They're the ones that have to do the extra work. So you can, yeah, bring it up to them and, and it's up to them how they move forward with it. So yeah. that's really important. I think. Yeah. Um, let me just look over my questions here and see what else I have. Okay, so um, one of the pillars that we work with in Everyday Divinity is we work with part body, mind, spirit, right? We work with that, but also we have an overlighting mentor or guide. And so this month we work with the body and we're working with the Ascended Master Isis. And for me, she is like the, ugh, she's just been, I don't know, I can just rely on her for everything. <laughs> She's gotten me to this point. And I, um, you know, I feel like she is, you know, the, the mother of 10,000 names, the, the mother of nourishment and grain and the rivers. And so she's really about, for me, she's about embodiment. And if you know, like her story, she was about the earth, you know, she, worked with the earth magic she worked with the kundalini of the earth and the kundalini of the body and and she was really a goddess of the earth um a protector almost of the earth and so um that's kind of our journey that we're starting to explore is our connection to the earth our connection to the body our connection to Gai isis and what she can represent for all of us and each of us has a different view the goddess shows up in whatever form we need whatever form our heart is ready to receive and so I'm just curious, like if you have a connection with the goddess and, and what does she represent to you? Yeah, I have not worked closely with Isis, like consciously. <laughs> um, I believe I did. I have, um, I'm really a book nerd, obviously. I'm going to keep mentioning book. I have the book, The Sophia Code. Mm -hmm. And if anyone has heard of that, it's like um, literally an activation where you like read these different archetypes goddesses you read these things out loud and it really like activates the energy within you and I believe I've done the Isis um 
activation. I tend to like pick that book up and like do one chapter and then like put it away for a little while. And then like, whenever I feel called to go back to it. Um, I feel like I'm just starting to work with Mary Magdalene a little bit more. Um, but yes, the idea of, you know, of course, working with the earth, like being in our bodies. I love practicing Kundalini yoga and meditation. I've been doing that for many years. Um, and one of the ways that I like my approach to health is often all, um, what do I want to say? Um, like one of the more feminine frequencies in my, in my approach to health that's been coming through is this idea of devotion to ourselves and treating ourselves as if we were a goddess and supporting our bodies as if we were a goddess. So it's really like, um, you know, if I were a goddess, what would my morning ritual look like? Like if I were a goddess, like what would my bedtime ritual look like? Like what is goddess food to me? Like what feels nourishing and supportive? Like how would I move my body if I wasn't doing it to like lose weight or try to change my body shape or whatever because I thought I wasn't good enough but if I was just moving to like express my vitality and joy and to keep my body healthy because it's a temple for me and I want to be able to um like be around for a while right and so it's like okay how would I move if I were like moving goddess energy and yeah. And so that's one of the ways that I really love to work with it. And then I brought in um, this download, I guess, that came through was a lot of people use discipline in health and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, but we use it a lot to kind of abuse ourselves and make ourselves wrong. It's like, oh, I'm not disciplined enough. I'm not doing things consistently. Like, um, and discipline I see as kind of a divine masculine trait. And so of course it has its kind of light and shadow like all traits do. Um, but I feel the feminine frequency of discipline is devotion. And so I've really been playing with like, just like we would be devoted to the goddess, like how can we show devotion to ourselves and our bodies and our highest holistic health? And what I love about devotion is it does have this like spiritual undertone. And so those of us that play easily in the spiritual world, you know, it's a nice way to like bring that into the physical of like, okay, I'm devoted to my highest self. I'm devoted to showing up authentically. I'm devoted to maybe my family or my pet or, you know, and like, and I'm devoted to myself. I'm devoted to move my body. And then how would I treat her if I really was devoted to my body? And that allows for so much of a more gentle, like non-judgmental. And what I like to say, it makes me feel like I'm being pulled towards something rather than having to like push myself to do something. Um, so I love this frequency of devotion. The other piece I love about it is that it, um, devotion can also have, well, I don't know, I think about like being devoted to a lover. And so I feel like there can be kind of this erotic undertone to it too. And like, I'm a Scorpio, so I love all things sex <laughs> and sexual and sacred sexuality and sensuality and everything. And so I love that piece of it too. Like if you, you know, and you can bring in the spiritual piece if it resonates or not, you can bring in the erotic piece or not if it resonates with you. But like, I also love that idea of like, I'm devoted to my body, body in an erotic way too. And so I want to give her pleasure. And how would I give her pleasure with food that's nourishing? And how would I give her pleasure with like movement and um, self-pleasuring or those kind of things? So um yeah, yeah. And I feel like, you know, as always, like you feel like you've got, I, I feel like I've gone so deep. And then I feel like there's just probably hundreds more worlds like down there to go even deeper. So I feel that like probably some deeper, more specific goddess work um, is in my future. I also have a cancer north node which is kind of like the divine mother and so mm -hmm. north node my understanding i'm beginner astrologist but it or just a beginner at astrology um but that's kind of like my life's purpose or like what i'm moving towards in this lifetime is like um is embodying and and everything with the divine mother so yeah and connecting to the earth is so important with connecting to our bodies and our health as well so mm -hmm. absolutely 
Absolutely. And I love how you, cause I I'm in your Facebook group and I love all the little videos and lives that you do. And I just, when I can catch it, I, I try to, because you always bring it simply, but also profound, you know, it's, it's how can we use it in this physical space right now? Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> sometimes I'm up here with the spirituality. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to bring it down. So I love how your stuff is fun and lighthearted, but also very grounded and practical. Um, Thank you. It's so fun too. It's like, oh yeah, grapes. I totally, like my goddess food is grapes. Yes. Like, yes. And, and like the meat and cheese, tr I don't eat meat anymore. Well, I still eat turkey, I guess, but um, you know, like the cheese trays, the crackers and the olives, like that is like my goddess food. And so you know, when I'm kind of feeling like, oh, what, what do I need? And it's like, oh yeah, that's what I need. So yes. that's really beautiful. Same. And it's like olives and fruit, and like figs and dates and all of that feels like so nourishing on many, on, on multiple levels, right? Like physical, mm -hmm. emotional, mental, and spiritual. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so let me go through my notes again. Um, oh, so this course, of course, this course, of course, <laughs> this six month program is about everyday divinity. So um, you kind of explained a little bit about this with your devotion, but what does divinity mean to you? Yeah. I think to me, it just means that, um, that, like the divine is not external to me. I mean, it is, it's in everything around me and everyone around me, but it's also within me. And so again, because of how I grew up, I kind of got this idea of like the man in the clouds and I was the lowly human flesh sinner or something. And now it feels like the inverse of that divinity to me feels like, um, yeah, it just feels like I am literally an expression of the divine and of source. And um, yeah, and so ultimately, you know, like I am one with everything and everything is one with me. And that doesn't mean that I would always feel like that at all. I'm sure there's plenty of times where I don't feel like that. But um yeah, I think that's what divinity means to me is it's really like it's in my bones and also like the dark places, I'll say, because I think divinity, again, there's an idea that maybe it's just light, but it's like, I think there's divinity in my shadows and there's divinity in my sex and there's divinity in my body, like all the places that I was taught that it wasn't and that were maybe even bad or sinful or whatever. Um, those are actually really can be very potent gateways to the divine, right? Like our bodies, our breath, sex. Um, yeah. So I think like divinity is truth and like reality is the illusion. <laughs> right? Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that more and more of us women, especially, or, or those who identify as women are starting to experience that again, like we're remembering our connection to the goddess, we're remembering um, that it is all within us. And so like you said earlier, how can you devote yourself as a goddess would, you know, how can you nurture yourself and tend to the body, the mind and the spirit in a way that is uplifting and through it all through the shadows and through the light, right, and embracing all of it. So um, I really, I really love that too. Yes. Um, Okay, so let's see. Does anyone have any specific questions for Caitlin? I have a couple other little pieces I might bring up, but if you guys have any questions, you can um, type it up or you can unmute yourself if you would like. You know Tina Zion? Is she yeah, a medium? I don't know who that is. I'm not sure who that is. I, I don't think I've ever heard of her. So if you guys have any questions, you can absolutely unmute yourself. If not, you can type it or we'll just hang out for a moment. <laughs> Break. <laughs> I 
feel like I want to do a plug for lemon balm, like as you're diving into the earth and all these things too, like herbs are such a beautiful way to like support our body with plants, like, right? Like with these food as medicine and like plants as medicine and herbalism. I dove into herbalism um, for a couple years as well. And that's one of my favorite ways to like connect with the earth and I've been doing a lot of teas. I just like make my own concoctions. I just like throw in a lot. Lately, I've been loving mugwort um, with red raspberry leaf tea. And then I put in um, goji berries inside a strainer and it's really good. Yeah. Like making, and it has so many different benefits. You know, it's very supportive for the women's you know, the woman's system, but also mugwort also kind of opens up your consciousness. So like before I'm going into meditation, mugwort will open up your third eye, open up your awareness in a way that you can kind of start to see beyond the veil. So it's one of those herbs that like the great mystics used to use um, as, as that medicine. So I love, I love to use that. It has a very bitter taste, but um, you know, a little bit of honey always does it good. <laughs> yeah. And I've yeah. heard of mugwort as using it to help, I think, enhance dreams as well, mm-hmm. like kind of the dreamscape and also dream recall in the morning. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's amazing. I feel like yeah. I want to say too, I have this book next to me. This is my latest obsession. Have you read this? Yes. It's blowing my mind. It you is- need to follow him. He is I do. amazing stuff. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I love him because he's a medical doctor and it's so, you know, I, yeah, I love like other conscious medical providers, especially the masculine, like that just feels so healing to me. So yeah, this book is blowing my mind. It doesn't surprise me at all that you've already dove into it. But one of the things that I most recently read that I was just on another level of like, whoa, because they were talking about how worshiping the womb and the goddess religion and the cosmic womb was like, um, was like everyone across the world did it back in the day and it was one thing for me to kind of hear that and be like okay yeah I get like I was like I I believe it but it had a different impact with then I read um they say that 90 percent I want to find it now if I can um of the many stone age sculptures discovered around the world 90% of them are of female forms emphasizing the generative womb of life. Like to me, that really just blew my mind because I was like, oh, I think I always just like a little bit of science and logic to like support (laughs) something. And I was like, oh my God, 90% of the Stone Age sculptures are of the female forms. Like how did I not know that? Like how has nobody said that before? Anyways, that's one of my favorite. I love that. And and it's so true. And we can go on and and talk even longer about that. Like the, what is it? The Willendorf, the, the Venus statue of Willendorf. Like she, you know, she has like this seven spiral hat kind of thing, which represents the cosmos. It represents the Palladian energy that also has, you know, her bare breasts and her big old belly, like, right. And she's like in her full form. And it's like, oh that is the the woman the mother right and so over the years things have been covered and you know we've been kind of conditioned to think of our bodies need to be a certain way and I love looking back at those ancient sculptures because a lot of them were you know they were voluptuous and they were in their true form and they were still honored because of the power that they bring forward because of the wisdom and the intuition that the women hold you know we they say, they say that we are, um, the women were the ones who started with the healing for, you know, even you can get into the, the old like priestesses of the serpent lineages and things like that, where they literally were channeling, they were vortexes and they were channeling the information to heal the people of, of the times. And so we're stepping back into that. And it feels really exciting to embrace ourselves. And of course, we're still going through all the ups and downs to, you know, what we've always thought was right or wrong. Um, But it's like this whole new era where we're questioning it all. And we're able to use our own gnosis and our own discernment to decide what is our truth. Can I honor myself for where I am in this moment now? Can I see the beauty in every wrinkle, every dimple, every gray hair? Can I see how far I've come and where I'm at now and appreciate it all? 
And so that's like my hope for, you know, women as we continue to move forward is to embrace it all as, as ourselves, as divine humans. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen, sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just to bring it full circle, right? Like that's again, why this is so important. Like that's why this work that everybody's doing here is so important. It's, um, yeah, I mean, boy, the times are changing, aren't they? I think we can all feel it in one way or another. And um, yeah, so this is the last little thing I'll share, but um, this other conscious physician that I really love named Dr. Zach Bush, he was sharing something about, and I'm not gonna do it justice. It was, um, I think a, S a South American, story or something but anyways it's basically that like this tribe is talking about how we've been flying as this one winged bird just using the divine masculine or the shadow masculine even and we've been like going in circles and right now is the time where like the other wing of the divine feminine is supposed to unfold so that we can really like be balanced and fly straight and you know it's of course not about like bringing the masculine down. It's about like the union and bringing the masculine and feminine together and working together and honoring all of our gifts to um, be able to like move forward <laughs> into yeah. new dimensions. So I love that. That really resonates with me. I just had a full on vision of you as Isis with her wings spread. <laughs> I was like, yes, I had tears in my eyes for a second there. I'm like, whoo hoo. Oh, I'm going to have to go back and do that ISIS activation again or look at it or something because, um, yeah, I'm feeling drawn to that now. She's a very wonderful goddess to bring us back to our balance, back to our sovereignty, understanding that we can be strong and gentle and vulnerable. We can be a mother, a wife, and a healer. We can really she represents, you know, and many other stories, the story of Yeshua and Mary Magdalene are the same where they are going through the cyclical nature of death, of life and death and rebirth. And, but really how the feminine also raised the masculine into the healed masculine. Mm -hmm. you know, they went from the ego, the death, the suffering, the things that happened, right? But they were able to revive that. And so how important it is for us mothers, and you don't have to be an actual mother to embrace that archetype. It's it's the wisdom that comes with age and it's about the embodiment. And, and so as we do this, um, you know, my, one of my visions that I always have is like those, those mothers, we are, we are raising the, the masculine back into a healed space. Of course, they have to do the work. We're not doing right. the, but we're, we're creating the sacred space for them to see the potential. And we, as women and then that feminine energy, we're here to guide that energy, right? That's what we do. We, we kind of create the space. And then um, it's like, we kind of give the masculine energy that direction and then they move forward with it. And so it's kind of like, that's where we're at. We're building that sacred container. So the healed masculine can rise within all of us, right? It's within us, it's within everyone. Um, and it's in all things, just like you said, with the wings, you know, it's about bringing it back up and bringing that balance. So the rise of the feminine is here. And with that, hopefully the rise of the healed masculine will be here too. Yes, that was so beautifully said. I love that. And in the polarity world, world I sometimes hear um, the phrase like, the feminine, the feminine frequency goes first, like the feminine frequency goes first, like we get to set the tone, our energy sets the tone. And so, um, yeah, it's so important. It's so important. And yeah, yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So I have a couple bonus questions yeah. for you, just a, cute, a couple one. They're, they're just kind of fun. Um, what is one versus, uh, what's your favorite pick me up snack? <laughs> Oh, let's see. My favorite pick-me-up snack. I mean, Honey Mama's chocolate, probably. Mm -hmm. Honey Mama's is like the most amazing chocolate in the world. Um, whatever. It's just a chocolate that, that I love. Um, right now, I also honestly just I'm really into like carrots and this hummus that I found. That's everything bagel flavored hummus. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah, or like an apple or something. But yeah, all of the above. It's really whatever I'm feeling like in the moment. Yeah. Okay, next question is, what is your favorite, and it could be either of these, it doesn't have to be all of them, but what is your favorite either podcast, book, or like artist or music that you're currently like really inspired by? Oh my gosh. I mean, for sure. I don't know if this counts still, but I am obsessed with this book right now. So yeah, mm -hmm. like Womb Awakening, 1000%. <laughs> um, and also what we already covered, because Women Who Runs With The Wolves, I also think is like in my top three to five books. Beautiful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Okay. And last one. So if you had one piece of advice for women in the world today, what would it be? Mm. What would it be? It would be to start to tap into and trust your body wisdom, like tap into and trust your body wisdom. So start to get familiar with listening to your body. What is she telling you? It's not random how she reacts to things, how he or she or they react to things. Um, and so first just start like noticing it and tapping into it and then start trusting it and then start like following her guidance because it will lead you to health and mm -hmm. spiritual awakening and beyond. Like it will lead you to everything. It's going right back to like the divinities inside of us and in a very embodied, real way, like our body speaks to us. So um, yeah, so tapping into your, you, I think we can call it your body's wisdom, or we could call it your womb wisdom, or whatever other way resonates with people. But like, um, yeah, tapping into that, learning how to trust it, and then learning how to like, let it lead us. Mm, I love that. And that's definitely what we're doing in this program is learning, learning all of it. So I'm so happy that you are here and that you were able to do this. And I, like I said, I just love your energy. So how can people, like, what are you working on and how can people get a hold of you or find you? Yeah, um, let's see. So I'm on Facebook. You're welcome to friend me. You're welcome to DM me and reach out. I'm also on Instagram, Dr. Caitlin Jarvis. Um, and let's see, I have my Facebook group, which I love, like public Facebook group. It's called Intuitive Holistic Health and Wellness for Women. Mm -hmm. um, I can pop, I could pop the links like in the chat or I don't know, we could pop in somewhere else if we need to. But yeah, you can also just search for it. It's like Intuitive Holistic Health and Wellness for Women is my Facebook group. And then, um, yeah, I do medical, I'm currently offering medical intuitive sessions. I'm also offering, um, you can at any time really get like a medical intuitive session, most any time or a single session for holistic health um, coaching. Right now I have three spots open for my kind of signature private six month container where I work one-on-one -on -one with someone. Um, and that's kind of my, my feels like my most potent and powerful container because it really allows for like six months of transformation. So often people, you know, they know the feeling of like making the change, but then not being able to sustain the change, like kind of a lot mm -hmm. of start stop. So it's like, okay, we get to make the change. We get to sustain it through this time. And we really get to dive deep with like physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual and I didn't ask for it, but I, what has been emerging is also that I've been guiding people like no surprise on more like spirituality, intuitive development, divine feminine embodiment, sacred sensuality, sacred sexuality. So for those folks that that resonates with, then that's a piece of that often too. So that's what I'm most about it excited right now is like kind of seeing who's going to come in. I have three spots open, seeing who's going to come in for that. Um, but I offer just a free discovery call where you're welcome to just, I mean, you can DM me on social media or um, yeah, if you don't know where to start, then I can just get on a complimentary discovery call with people and I can kind of see where you're at and where you wanna go and make some recommendations. And obviously it's never any pressure. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I love it. I love all the work you're doing and how you bring, like I said, you bring that lightheartedness, that fun aspect of it. 
but also it's like practical and real you know it's like this is this is a way that you can you can do it and I just appreciate everything that you do and watching your journey and how we've connected and just being able to you know kind of support each other in this is really important too so thank you so grateful you're so welcome my pleasure my pleasure to be here and connect with everybody feel free to reach out about anything if you have questions that pop up or um yeah in any way Okay. And I'll put the I'll put the group name in our face our private Facebook group, and then when I upload this to YouTube, I'll also put it in the YouTube comments as well with your information if if you're cool okay. with that. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And people can always just look at my website. Like, I think it's just I'm like, what is it? CaitlinJarvis.com, um, mm-hmm. or you can email me at like Caitlin at CaitlinJarvis.com. You're mm-hmm. so welcome. Thank you for being here. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. I adore you. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right. Well, you take care. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye.